Welcome back to this Godot tutorial series on making an action RPG. I'd like to revisit the error I made last time just one more time because the biggest issue last time was not so much that there was a bug as that it failed and I wasn't immediately aware of it. Generally, when things fail, that's fine, but we want them to fail loudly, ideally crashing the program. One thing that I've done in order to catch any more issues with the facing not being one of these four values is I've added this this default option to the match. If you have underscore as one of the cases for a match statement, it will match anything. Uh, what I've done here is I've put an assert. So basically the way asserts work is they evaluate some Boolean condition, and if it's false, it will throw an error. In this case, I'm just asserting false, so that's always going to be false. But that will only be executed if we actually get to this case, meaning uh, if the facing isn't one of these four, then the program will throw an error. Now, what we want to implement today is pits that is, holes that the hero can fall into and jump over. Looking at our tile set, we have a number of options for the pits. However, the way that I would like to do this is to actually have a separate pit tile set. And the reason for this is uh, when we go and look at the tile map, we're going, right now we only have grassland, but we're eventually going to have a bunch of different tiles. And the more tiles we have, the harder it will be to find the ones we want. Also, if we have the pits in a separate tile map, then we can just look at collisions with that tile map for determining collisions with the pits, which might be the simplest method. So let's create a folder for our tile sets. Call it tile sets. Uh, we'll move our existing tile set in here. Let's rename it land tiles. So the idea being this will be like grass, dirt, uh, maybe we can include hills there, the ground on which we're painting everything else. And then uh, let's create a second tile set, which we will call pit tiles. So this tile set will represent all of the pits. Uh, we duplicated it, so we do still have the original grassland tile. Let's just get rid of that. And for now, I'm just going to create a single tile, which will be this one. I'll call it single grass pit. The little bits of grass going over the side of the pit suggest that this is a pit that you would find in grassland. And the last thing to do is to add a collision box. So I go to collision, um, you can just select rectangle and fill that in. And now that has a collider. Returning to our test room, we will add another tile map. And for organizational purposes, it's probably best to put all of these under a node. Um, we'll call it tile maps and we'll move both of these here. The first tile map is for the land such as the grassland, and then the second one is for pits. We will add our pit tile set here, and now we can paint, oh, set the cell size to 16 by 16, and now we can paint pits in our scene. If we go into the scene and try to move into the pit, we can see that we are stopped. And the reason for that is because the pits, uh, by default, have a collision on layer one, and our hero, has a collider, our hero is a kinematic body 2D, so um, he also has a collider on layer one. So this would be good if the pits were like a wall that prevents the hero from moving into their space, but pits are not a wall. The idea with pits is they're a hazard where you walk over them and then you fall down and maybe you respawn at the entrance to the room or something. So what we're going to do is we are going to create a new layer that is the pit layer. We go to Project Settings, we go to 2D Physics, and let's name the first layer Terrain, and we'll name the second layer Pits. So the hero does not exist in the Terrain layer, but has a mask on the Terrain layer, so that the hero can collide with Terrain. And the Pits uh, do not exist on the Terrain layer, they exist in the Pits layer, and we do not give them a mask. So basically, uh, layers and masks, um, layer, you can think of it as a uh, layer is where the object is, and mask is where the object is looking for collisions. So if the mask of one object coincides with the layer of another, then there will be a collision. And with that change, we are able to move over the pits. Of course, we don't want to move over them, we want to fall into them and die. 
In order to manage this, we are going to go to the hero and we are going to create an area which will be uh, around the hero's feet to detect pits. Let's add area 2D, collision shape 2D, and let's just make it a rectangle for now. So we'll have a little rectangle down here where the hero's feet are, and we'll call this pit detector. Okay, so if we look at pit detector, it's an area 2D, so it has the following signals. And specifically, we're going to want to add body entered and body exited to detect when we enter or exit a pit, um, which is treated as a physics body. We can just go here and create new functions by connecting these signals to the hero. We're going to add a variable is over pit. And whenever we enter a pit, we are going to set it to true. And then likewise, when we exit, we'll set it to false. And for now, what we can do is, uh, if we are over a pit, we can just teleport the hero back to the origin tile at zero, zero. Oh, and one other important thing we have to do, um, of course, the pit detector should only be detecting collisions with pits. Um, right now, pit detector is on layer one and has mask one. So we'll just disable the layer and we'll change mask to two so that uh, pit detector is only able to detect pits uh, as opposed to terrain. So now when we try to walk into a pit, we teleport back to where we started. And of course, we probably want some sort of graphic that shows that the hero got hurt or some graphic of the hero falling into the pit, uh, screaming all the way down. But um, the important thing is that now going into a pit will reset us, which has created an obstacle for the hero. Now, how is the hero going to avoid them? Well, this is where jumping comes in. We are going to give the hero the ability to jump over the pit. So first things first, let's go to the hero and we're going to create a jumping animation. Jumping is pretty simple. Basically, um, we'll create a new animation player, call it jump animator, and we'll create a new animation called jumping. And when the hero is jumping, basically we're going to have the sprite move up into the air and back down. So we grab the sprite, we go to its transform, we create a track for this. Uh, let's say it takes the hero 0.5 seconds to jump. After 0.2 seconds, we'll have the hero be at negative 16 in the air. That looks like this. We'll have the hero stay there for a moment. And then the hero will come back down to the ground. I'm going to use cubic interpolation here so that it's a little bit smoother. And hmm, OK, that's not quite what I want. Reduce the snap and make the period of time in the air a little bit longer and try that. Okay, that seems reasonable. Now when the hero is in the air, uh, we're going to have a variable called is in air. And this will be false, of course. And actually, I think we want to control this with the animator. So let's export this variable. If we go back to the animator, we are going to add this as one of the tracks to jumping. So at the start of the jump, um, the hero becomes uh, in the air. And at the end of the jump, the hero is no longer in the air. And then all we have to do is go back to the hero script. And the hero is only going to fall into the pit if the hero is over the pit and is not in the air. Also, we need a control for the hero to jump. So let's create a function called jump. If the hero is already in the air, obviously we can't jump again. So if is in air, we will just return. And otherwise, we can just play the jump animation. Then we'll go into our controller. We can say if input dot is key pressed. Let's map jump to the spacebar for now. Then get parent dot jump. And in fact, uh, rather than doing get parent each time, let's just create a variable for this uh, on ready var hero equals get parent. And then we'll just replace this with hero. All right, our hero can now jump about and can jump over the pit. Let's see what happens if we fall in the pit. Okay, so if we fall in the pit, we go back to the start. If we take a running jump, we can get over the pit. Last thing uh, we want to do here is mostly just cosmetic. 
Uh, right now, it's not super clear where the hero is positionally when jumping. So I've created a little shadow sprite. We are going to put that on the pit detector, call it shadow. Um, and as you can see, shadow is right now over the character, so let's move it underneath. And in fact, I'm not sure we even need to see shadow when the character is not jumping. So I'll just go into the jump animator. When the character is jumping, we will set the visibility as one of the tracks. So the shadow becomes visible when jumping and ceases to be visible when not jumping. And that makes it much easier to track where the hero is while in the air. Well, that's all for now. Next time, we'll learn how to pick up and throw objects such as pots or rocks that might block your path. Thanks for watching.